MCT4C in and around day 14. Uh, the lesson is combining transformations, so we're going to take the last couple of days' lessons and put them all together into these big, long uh, trig functions with numbers all over the place, and we got to sort of piece it all together. So what I've done uh, here for the three-minute review where you're supposed to just sort of pick out the pieces, since you can use a TI-83 if you like, um, I've got my table here, but I'm going to go through a few things um, real quick. So the amplitude, remember, is kind of the number that's in front, except for that if it's negative, we always just take the positive number. Uh, the axis, or the vertical shift, is the number on the end. Right? And if there is no number on the end, we say that it's y equals 0. That, that's the line that the trig function sort of goes around, right? So if this the axis would be there. Uh, the period... It normally is 360 if there's no adjustment and if there's no B value. The B value is in with the X and in this case there's no number. It's implied to be 1 so the period hasn't changed. It's 360. The domain's always all real numbers. And then the range because um, we don't have a axis shift, a vertical shift, that it just gets stretched along with the amplitude negative 3 to 3. Um, and, and then you know, we keep going here. So so when B is 3, for instance, the period is 360 divided by 3, which is 120. How we would graph that is we'd figure out uh, how often the important points appear. One thing that I want to mention is how we're going to get the range without having a graph. Okay, because that seems where those numbers come from. Maybe I used a calculator, but I didn't. What I did is I used a little bit of logic here, and I'm not going to explain all of them. They're all there for you to, to check your answers. But the idea is I know the axis is up 7, right? And, and I just actually thought about this, but you could do a little sketch like this. The axis is up 7, so I know my sine function is going to go up and down from there. Um, and it's going to have some sort of period and so on. I know it's going to go you know, medium high, medium low, whatever. The, it's going to look something like that. But how high is it going to go? And how low is it going to go? From there to there, I could think, well, what are those high and low values? Well, how do I know how high to go from 7? It's got to do with the amplitude, right? So I can go up 1.2 units from there. That's That goes up to 8.2. I go down 1.2 units from there. That's, I believe, 5.8, like I wrote in there. And then there's the range from, from 5.8 to to 8.2. Another one that's like that is the last one, and it's got everything involved. It's got a flip there, and it's got you know, everything's messed up in this one. Um, but I want to go over this range business again. Notice that the middle point would be way, and there's, there's the axis, it would be way down here at minus 14. It's a coast graph, so I know it's going to start above somewhere, start above, and then go back and forth, right? But how far above is it going to go? And this isn't to scale, but from the axis here, it's going to go up amplitude, two units. So from negative 14, it's going to go up to negative 12, and down two units from there is to negative 16, and that's where the range comes from. Okay, So we don't necessarily need to have a, a graph to be able to do that. All right, on to the lesson. And this, I'm hoping today's lesson should go fairly quick, because it is just a comp. Uh, combination of of the last two days unit stuff, but I'm going to sort of try and go reasonably quick quickly through all this this uh, business combining transformations. And we see there's sort of two um, expectations to describe the roles of each of these things, and we did them separately the last couple of days. And then we want to be able to sketch graphs. So the, there's kind of two things going on. There's a transformation. So when we throw a number in with a function. We talk about a transformation. That would be the same thing if we were transforming a parabola or an exponential function later in the course or last year. But it also changes its trig properties. It also changes the amplitude and the period and stuff like that. So that's what that's why there's two down here. So I'm gonna sort of do it like this. First thing, that A, what's the transformation? Well, the transformation is, you know, that's out front of the of the rule. 
that's a, you know, and we're multiplying, it's a vertical stretch. And that's by a factor of A, right? Factor A. And there's some other rules, like if A is negative, we know it's a flip and all that other business. For the trig properties on that one, well, what's the trig property that's, that's uh, changed is the amplitude. The amplitude is A units. Now I'm going to do something a little bit new here because, again, if we think about A being negative, the amplitude's always positive, right? So there's a little math thing that helps with that, and it's the absolute value signs like this. This means we're only going to take the positive value. So if you see this in a textbook somewhere where I write it like this, um, what it means is chop off the negative, just take the positive value. Um, the second thing, this B, what does it change? Well, it's in with the X, so it's going to be a horizontal something, not a vertical something. Um, horizontal in the direction of x, and what does it do? Well, it's opposite that you think. You think multiplying by something should stretch it, like it does in the, um, the direction of y, but in the direction of x, it goes opposite. This is a horizontal squish, isn't it? And we could say factor b, but really all the distances are cut in a fraction, 1 over b, right? And we talked about that, about when we talk about the period, because that's what we happened down here in the important point. So the trig properties, it's a horizontal squish, but it changes the period. The period is you know, 360 divided by b, and then the important points, which is that helps us with the graphing. Normally, the important points are every 90, but we divide that by B as well. Third, I'm just going in alphabetical order here. That number outside of the rule, outside of the X, is affecting Y values. So what does it do? It just moves it up C, doesn't it? Same thing as way back in grade 10 when we had parabolas. If we had plus 3, that moved it up 3. Well, if this was 3, it would move it up 3. Um, inside with the X, though, that would be like this one. Inside with the X. Oh, hang on. Before I move on, let's, what does that do uh, trig property-wise? Trig property-wise, we know it moves up three, but we think of that as a vertical shift. Vertical shift. Up C. Or we think of the axis being y equals c. So that's that, that's that line that goes back and forth, right? So if we think of this, this is the line y equals c, and, and the trig function goes back and forth there. Um, all right, lastly, in with the x, I was talking about that, that fourth one, that's just moved it right, doesn't it? Right, d units. And the trig property that we think of that, that's a phase shift. Good. All right, let's put this to, to use now. Describe the transformations that must be applied to this, and we see we got a whole bunch of stuff. So when we're talking about transformations, we're talking about you know stretches and squishes and, and moves left and right and all those things. So um, I'm just going to list them here. We know it's a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch. And it would be a squish if it's less than 1, right? If this is a fraction, it's a vertical squish. Vertical squ uh, stretch factor 2.5. Now, since it's negative, it's also a flip, isn't it? Or the fancy math word would be a reflection. The fancy math word for a stretch is an expansion. Uh, 2. Well, if this was a number, it's always opposite in the direction of x. Since this is in with the x, it's a... And you think multiplying by a half should be a squish, but it's a horizontal stretch. And we'll actually see these um, uh, 
horizontal stretch by a factor of two, right? The number on the bottom. We'll see these transformations come up again when we talk about exponential functions and, uh, and that sort of thing as well later in the course. Three. That number hanging out at the end, it's not in with the X, so it's a vertical something. Up two, isn't it? Up two. Fourth, opposite in the direction of X, right? We think it should minus, makes us think left, but it's right. 60 degrees. Phase shift is what we would call it as far as um, trig functions are concerned, but we'll, we'll say right six. 60. That's actually two ticks, isn't it? Remember, each tick's worth um, 30, so this is when we get to the graph, it'll be right two ticks. State the amplitude, period, and domain, and range. So the amplitude, we just take the positive number, right? Amplitude is 2.5. The period, 360 divided by a half. Flip and multiply there. But when we get to a graph, we want to talk about the important points. 90 divided by a half. Flip and multiply every 180. And if you notice that there's not many different periods that we have, if we have to graph it, then you're right. There's not a, there's not a lot. We, we sort of stick to a few common ones. Um, domain. X is a member of the reals range. Now, since we got the graph, you could you could leave the range to later, but let's let's just think about this. We know we're starting at 2. And we're starting at 2. There's 2, and this is almost like a rough copy of this. Um, and then the amplitude means we're going up another 2.5. So it's going to go up as far as 4.5, and down 2.5 from there means we're going to go down to minus five, right? So there's the range. And hopefully we'll see that once we get to the graph as well. Y is less than 4.5 is the range. And of course, if you wanted to do that after the graph, then you're welcome to. Okay, here we go. Set up my scale. Since I know the range here, I could, could fix this a little bit so that you know, I got more room down than up. Um, that's okay. Set up my scale. Important points. Like this. Mess that up too bad. That's 90. 90 270 and 360. And I gotta go up to 4.5. Can I go up by 2? 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, I can scale on there, minus one there. Okay. And so, how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to use all this stuff to, to come up with the, uh, the graph, but I've got kind of a technique that I want to want to use. What I, Instead of drawing each of the little graphs and start with the original one, right? The original coast graph is, is, is there. I'm going to see if I can skip right to the final graph. So here's my technique. I'm going to try and find a fi uh, starting spot. And then I'm going to use my important points to get the, the graph. Now, how do we find the starting spot? Well, that's from things like the move right and the move up is going to change my starting spot, right? No. Okay, well, the move up, I'm going to um, draw what the new axis would be, right? Up to means the new axis is right here. So I suppose I should use a ruler because this kind of looks crappy, but that's, uh, oh, well. This is the axis y equals 2, and then I'm going to go up and down from there, right? This is 2, and I'm going to go up 2.5 from there. My starting spot would be there. Right, because the amplitude's two and a half. Right, the amplitude was two and a half, and I'm a coast graph, so I'm starting starting high. But the last thing is I got to move right 
60 degrees, right two ticks. So my starting spot is right there. Again, there's my new axis. Since it's a coast graph, I'm starting high. And I'm not, it's not just one unit off the axis because of the amplitude. I'm two and a half units off the axis. Now, there's my start spot. So there's my start. Now, how am I going to get the next point? Well, the next point normally would be every three ticks. And I go high, middle, low, middle, high, middle, low, uh, and so on. But my period has changed. My important points aren't every three ticks. They're every three divided by a half equals six ticks. Every six ticks. And that's what 180 degrees is, right? Three, six ticks. So every six ticks, I get an important point. High, middle, six ticks, important point. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to go low. Now, how low? Well, i got to use my amplitude to go two and a half units off the axis. One, two and a half units off the axis. And then, geez, then I'm done, aren't I? Connect them with a nice smooth curve. Whoops. And label it. All right. We only got the one example left after this one. I got to see if it's worth starting us a part two here or whether what's going on. Okay. I'm going to stop and then we'll pick up the last example in a very short part two.